the Hardy-Weinberg principle is usually presented like this. If there are two alleles in a population of a gene or of a locus, let's say those alleles are big A and little a, then we write the frequency of one of those alleles, let's say big A, as P, and we write the frequency of the other one of those alleles, let's say little a, we represent as Q. And, um, and because these are frequencies, right, they must add up to one. Now, if random mating produced the population that we're studying, then the frequency of the homozygote, big A, big A, is P squared. The frequency of the homozygote, little a, little a, is Q squared. And the frequency of the heterozygote, big A, little a, is 2 times P times Q. And for a justification for those uh, probabilities, you can refer back to the previous video. But because these genotype frequencies are frequencies, they must also add up to 1. These equations are kind of the basic mathematical representation of the Hardy-Weinberg principle. How do we actually use these to learn interesting things about populations? Well, there are really two common ways um, that, that this is used. And the first is to assume that a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and then to use these relationships to infer things about that population. For example, let's say that there's an autosomal recessive disease that affects 1% of the population. What proportion of the population is a carrier for that disease? Well, if we assume that this, and if we, if we specify, if we stipulate that this trait is autosomal recessive, then the affected individuals, right, must have a genotype of little a, little a. And so we know that because 1% um, of the population is affected by this disease, we know that the frequency of little a, little a is 0 0.1. And so if that frequency is Q squared, right, according to this representation over here, then we can directly infer the allele frequency of this little a allele, right, the frequency of little a is just the square root of the frequency of little a little a. And so the frequency of the little a allele must be 10%. But we can also now find out what the frequency of the big A allele is because P plus Q must equal 1, right? And so if P plus Q must equal 1, then P is simply 1 minus Q is 1 minus 0 0.9, I'm sorry, 1, 1 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9. And now we can be, now that we have p is 0 0.9 and q is 0 0.1, let me write that up there. That's a q, not a 9, right? Now that we know the values of p and q, we can determine the rest of these genotype frequencies, right? And so we can determine that the frequency in particular, 
of the heterozygote is 2pq, and let's plug the numbers in, 2 times 0 0.1 times 0. Point, nope, I got those backwards. Let's be consistent here. There we go, 2 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, or 0 0.18. And so if the question was, what was, um, how much of the population are carriers of this recessive autosomal trait, then the answer is 18%, right? And so that's one way to use these ideas, right, is to, in, is to take some, something we know about a population and infer things um, that we don't know. The second way is to take some population data and ask, is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? In particular, what this means is we're asking, is this population static, right, or is it changing? And is it, um, and are the individuals mating randomly? And so, for example, if I have, so, so right, so we can, we can test the Hardy-Weinberg assumptions. And so, let's say, for example, that I have three genotypes, big A, big A, big A, little A, and little A, little A, and um, out of 100 individuals, I count 60 of them are big A, big A, 30 of them are big A, little A, and 10 of them are little A, little A. Well, if, these, if this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, what proportions would I expect? Well, it turns out that there are 150 big A alleles, and there are 50 little a alleles. And so the frequency of big A, right, P, is 0 0.75, and the frequency of little a Q is 0 0.25. And now, if this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, I can determine the frequencies that I would expect, expect to see, right? And so my expected frequency P squared is 56.25%. My expected frequency of the heterozygotes, which is 2pq, is 37.5%, uh, and my expected frequencies of the homozygote recessive, little a, little a, is 6.25%. And now, when I have some data I have observed, and I have a set of expected proportions, and I want to ask, how well do my data fit my expectations? What approach should I use? That's right, it's chi-squared. Right, and so I will elide the math here, right? I'm not going to actually compute the chi-squared statistic here, and I'll just note that the chi-squared test statistic in this particular case is 4.0. And so with two degrees of freedom, I cannot reject the null hypothesis here. This number is not larger than the cutoff value that I get from my chi-squared table. I will note though, before we leave this, that this chi-square test can only detect large variations from the Hardy-Weinberg uh, assumptions, right? It is entirely uh, possible to violate them, uh, vi in particular to violate the assumption of random mating and still not get a significant result using chi-square. Finally, I will hasten to add that non-random mating is not the only way for an allele distribution in a population to change.
populations change by mutation, they change by random drift, and they change by natural selection. And so the processes that change allele frequencies are our next topics.